Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to Helsinki. Welcome to the Future of Gaming 2023. I'm Alex Branitsky, the founder of uh, Backed VC. Uh, and it always, feels, uh, it always feels amazing to be back in Helsinki to be talking on this topic, despite uh, minus 10 degree weather, snowstorms. Um, I think if you can make it out to Finland in the bleak midwinter, it shows uh, considerable spirit. Um, and I think we're all really excited to warm your creative souls today with some of the content. Um, Finland is an amazing meeting point of some of the best gaming talent globally, um, but also the spiritual home of open source software like Linux. Uh, and so it always feels like a, an apt location to be hosting these sorts of conversations, to be talking about the future of gaming, about blockchain gaming. Um, it also holds a very special place in my heart because Helsinki was the location of the first gaming investment I ever made at Bact. Um, and I remember vividly uh, some of the robust naked sauna sessions that I was made to participate in by that team uh, to show that I was worthy of being a, a Finnish gaming investor. Um, this is the second incarnation of the future of gaming. So the first one we held back in 2021 uh, when obviously everything was going up. We all looked like geniuses at the time. Um, but what was true of that period was that it did seem to represent a time when um, the first semi-mass market blockchain gaming companies were emerging. So you had CryptoKitties before that, but in 21, you had Axie reaching two to three million DAUs. It printed about a billion dollars of cash. And while we know the economic systems of those companies were somewhat flawed, um, you know, blockchain did seem to represent a different way to enfranchise and excite uh, players and gamers, you know, relative to some of the existing methods around ownership and and value transfer. Um, what was true about two to three years ago was that we thought the traditional gaming world and the blockchain gaming world was relatively siloed. Um, so there was a lot of suspicion, there was a lack of knowledge transfer, and that was really the philosophy behind the future of gaming, to encourage uh, conversations from across the spectrum of um, you know, gaming participants, to talk about game development, to talk about you know, live ops, um, questions around infrastructure and complex economic systems. Um, and so uh, the philosophy here today is to create a forum where we can share, you know, a multitude of different perspectives and insights. And of course, to get everyone really inspired and excited about what the future of gaming holds. Um, and I'm extremely excited about some of the speakers talking here today. They're some of the best in the world on this topic, from the likes of Hilmar from CCP Games, who should thread the needle between the old and the new better than you know, anyone I know, um, all the way to the likes of Justin Glibert, who will talk and probably blow our minds about fully on-chain gaming and autonomous worlds. Um, before I hand over to Piers, um, I would uh, love to thank our sponsors. Uh, they're no longer on the, on the screen, um, because without them, uh, this really wouldn't be possible. I mean, we, we, we genuinely couldn't have got this off the ground. So. Um, because, oh, here they are. Um, so all of the sponsors on the screens behind us, thank you so much for making this possible. Uh, and without further ado, pass it over to Piers. Yeah, thank you, Alex. Um, yeah, basically, we just wanted to reflect a little on where we've kind of been since uh, 2021, last time we were here. Obviously, Alex alluded to the negative uh, temperatures outside. It's the first time in a while where we haven't had sort of down-only price action, which is encouraging for, for all of us. Um, I think obviously we've seen sort of billion dollar, billions of dollars in funding um, since 2021. Um, I think obviously a lot of innovation has come out of that. We see a ton of projects in the space trying to push forwards. I think um, it's the first time, you know, in perhaps ever that we're actually seeing a number of playables, right? Um, you look at something like Hyperplay, we've got like 20, 30 playable games in there already. I think, um, yeah, for the first time we're actually, a lot of these theoretical questions around infrastructure and how some of these games like can and should be deployed. Um, we're having to answer those questions. I think, um, you know, we're seeing a ton of interest now from like a, a lot of the Eastern publishers. We've got Nexon, Crafton, Sega, um, the likes of all of them starting to show real interest. You know, in the West, we've got <clears throat> Immutables recently announced, uh, you know, their partnership with Ubisoft. Um, we've got folks like Zinger with Sugartown experimenting. I really think we're starting to see kind of the, uh, the tide shift a bit um, on that front. Um, 
I think, I mean, we touched on sort of Autonomous Worlds piece that's coming up. Very excited uh, about the kind of brain trust that's been built around that. I think some of the headway that's been made there is very exciting. Um, and obviously, yeah, just seeing a lot of these uh, actual distribution platforms, whether it's Epic Games or Google Play pushing out their uh, sort of guidelines for this stuff. I think the, um, the landscape's starting to look very different. So uh, very excited to have everyone here again today. Max, I think, is going to touch on a few of the, the themes that we're sort of excited about as well. Yeah, thank you. I think Piers and um, Max here from one of the, the partners at Fabric Ventures. Um, I think w w if we look at back at the sort of previous years, one of the topics that often came up is what's about to come? Where, what are the games that, are, that will be shipping? What will be the games that will have users? And if we look at where we are today, um, I think we've got a lot of uh, interesting sort of launches. We've got the likes of Ronin actually bringing in uh, a whole bunch of uh, new games, including the likes of Pixels with sort of 100,000 plus uh, active wallets. Um, we've got, as you mentioned, Immutable and Polygon bringing in massive game studios. Um, and specifically, one that's close to my heart, that we've got sort of Serere that has managed to have millions of, of signups uh, with hundreds of thousands of daily active users or weekly active users, 15 to 20 million of volume on a, on a monthly basis of, of cards that are traded, but specifically a really healthy volume where actually on the secondary you have more or twice as much volume as you do on the primary. And so it's the economy that's thriving, it's the users within the platform that are thriving. And most of them have no idea what that they're using sort of blockchain tech uh, at the end of the day. A lot of them are football fans, basketball fans, baseball fans, um, who happen to, to love the game for the characteristics it brings, uh, for the ability to, to own the assets, um, to be able to trade them on a secondary market, to, to see their, their purchases as an investment rather than an, a pure expenditure for their fun. Um, and at the end of the day, that's where I think a lot of the, the fun will be uh, will be had in the, in the coming years. Um, and so that's where uh, hopefully we'll have some interesting topics um, from the likes that you just mentioned um, that uh, we'll, we'll be building the next generation of, of gaming uh, at the intersection of Web3. And passing it over to, to Ronan. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say too much. I think you guys covered a lot of it. Um, I just want to say thank for everyone for coming, for the organizers and everybody to kind of put it together, especially for people coming from Helsinki, came from so, far, so far. So thanks for coming. Um, I think for me is what really impressive about these type of events and that's why we are continually uh, collaborating on those is really the theme of open collaboration and I think uh, coming from you know Web3 and also from the gaming industry we see the gap between how traditional gaming and studios how they collaborate between themselves and how open collaboration in Web3 creates so much innovation uh, and much in a faster space. Um, so for me I think events like this is really important to keep that in mind that we are playing in a very small pond today. Uh, the market is very small. We saw big investments, like you mentioned, in the last two years, but it goes down because we here need to figure out, like, what is that use case? What is, like, to show that there is something real here? Um, and there is a small pond. I mean, I think the top 5% of the industry are sitting in this room, and most likely the next big idea that's going to bring mass adoption is going to come from one of us in this room. Um, so for me, I think it's important that we take these events and... Um, share the challenges, talk about what we're trying to achieve, uh, be open-minded and, and understand that we're not really, um, um, we don't have a secret sauce, nobody really figured it out yet. <clears throat> and I think collaborating and, and sharing the secret sauce that we believe is going to make us number one, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a zero sum game, right? If, if, you, if we want more investments into the space, we need to prove something. And, and it's on us to prove that there is a big ocean out there. Um, and only by collaborating and being open about it, we can actually achieve that. So um, that's one of the things I want everybody to come out of this conversation and this uh, event. Be collaborative, be open, and understand that it's a positive, positive sum game here. Uh, if we can figure it out, money will flow in. And even if we're not number one or the number one game that wins the market, there's going to be a ton of money that will come in that all of us can stay and do what we love for the next 10 years. Because if we don't figure it out, we have to do something else in the next five to ten years. So um, I encourage everybody to uh, work hard and share, and share, share with each other. And, and thanks for coming. And for that, um, I think we're calling for the next speakers. Sure. Now we can pass it over to, to, to Ian, uh, who will be sharing part of the thesis on the future of gaming.